Okay, so we're going to have a quick run through the property feasibility model. So this is aimed at more developer side of things. We also have fairly comprehensive property planning content that uh, is more aimed at property fund managers, CFOs of development companies, anyone looking to understand kind of more balance sheet portfolio style effects. So if you're more on the finance side of things, it's worth having a look at the property planning content. We're just going to have a run through the feasibility piece here. Now, the feasibility model is largely a completed piece of kit. So when you do file new and open up the feasibility starting model, you've got pretty much everything you need to kind of get going with a, a single stage investment. So what I'll run you through here is the actual example model because that's got a few numbers in, but the same principles obviously still applied. So in terms of process of use, I would definitely open up the, the starting model because that's that's empty and kind of ready to go. So we'll just have a quick look through this example model table of contents, all pretty straightforward. In terms of the, the kind of core assumptions on the, the development side of things, these are all in section 2B, which is those kind of core assumptions. Now, what I'm not going to go through here is anything related to kind of traditional FISO stuff. So I'm assuming that everyone who's looking at this understands what a FISO is, has had some experience with something like an estate master, so kind of understands the core concepts of running a FISO. The main emphasis here is probably going to be more on what we specifically bring to the table. So in terms of structure, and again, I probably also won't cover off on the, the more generic Medano thing. So for example, it's very easy to right click and add a whole bunch of categories. That's kind of a, a given here. I'm also assuming that people understand, you know, the concepts of S curves and, and so on. So from a use perspective, probably the only thing just to note is that within each section, so within land costs and construction design and so on, there is an absolute set of cash flows as well as a relative set. So hidden below are our relative costs that are, you can drive off other aspects. So if you have contingencies, you can drive them off a percentage of another cost. Main thing to probably take away here is, is really around the, the timing side of things. So in terms of when you might want to start an actual cash flow, you can either choose an absolute date from within the model or you can use the critical path piece. Now, in terms of kind of new cutting edge feasibility technology, our FISO models kind of breathe. So we actually have this, this, this comprehensive critical path concept that allows you to string together and create relationships between different cost profiles such that if you have a blowout, say in a subdivision piece of work, then you can understand the impact of that delay on all of your other cash flows. So in this particular example, my land costs commence at the start of the model. However, my construction and design is currently set to critical path, and that critical path is set to the end of the direct land costs. So whenever my land costs are complete, I'm assuming my construction and design will then start. So probably easier to see this if, if we just head across to the actual summary sheet. And what you can see here is as soon as those two months worth of land costs are finished, we start to have my construction and design piece kick in. Now, up at the top on the right hand side, you'll notice a bunch of sensitivities. And this is really the power of, of the system. So let's just assume that there's a, a two month delay in those land costs. If I enter a two month duration sensitivity, what you'll be able to see down below is all of the all of those costs uh, my land costs spread over a, a greater period. Now, obviously, you can also include direct cost percentages in terms of not only a delay in time, but an increase in the, the fundamental cost. That ability to run those cost sensitivities, most people will give you the ability to add 20% to your costs. But in terms of what we've created here, the ability to run time-based sensitivities is something that you know all the banks are after, everyone wants to do. But there's no program that we know out there that allows you to really run those types of, of sensitivity. Uh, other thing just to note is you can have differentials around that that timing. So, for example, our marketing costs, we're assuming they're going to start six months before the end of construction. Now, if we run a sensitivity case that says, wait a minute, construction's now going to be another 12 months, those marketing costs will be pushed out as well. Obviously, all the sales hang off um, end of construction and so on. So we really are giving people the power to just, you know, use it almost a model that breathes by time to understand the impact of, of time on delays. Um, so that's one of the, the, the kind of main takeaways of the feasibility stuff. Everything else here is, is pretty clearly signposted, so hopefully nothing too complex. The other aspect that I was going to run through as well relates to the periodicity of the model. So whereas most feasibility platforms will, will give you 
great feasibility model, they'll often have the historicals in some other area or platform. The two are very kind of distinct. What our feasibility content has, as with you know most of the Medano content we put out there, it's got that beautiful kind of rolling mechanism. So for the, at the moment, this model is set up to have a, a pre-start month. At this point, you can include any kind of pre-start costs. Now, from a process of use perspective, you can easily just enter in a couple of lines and get a specy fiso up to understand your classic kind of straw man. How does this feasibility look? Does it hang together? You know, that's that's two or three assumptions. As you do more work, you know, you're going to be adding categories, adding more and more granularity in terms of those cash flows. At some point, you are going to get to a line in the sand where this project starts to become live. Now, at that point, what we typically will be doing is is heading across to the timing assumptions and updating when is my last historical month. So let's just assume we're kind of four months in. I'll change that last historical month. And if we go and have a look into the FISO, just to understand the structural changes, what you can see is we've now not only got that pre-start month, more columns have been created in which the FISO is basically saying, okay, now tell me what's happened in terms of this profile. If we hop across to, say, the financials, you'll see the financials stitched together, pre-start month, those historical months, and then roll into forecast. If we had annual financial modules inserted in here, and I'll touch on that later on, you'd also be able to see blended periods. So this period is a combination of X months of historicals plus the, the forecast for the remainder. If we also head over to the summary side of things, you'll see we've not only got, well, okay, what is the entire project return looking like? We've also got a status as at our last historical point in time. So, you know, if we were to pick up this project as at now, all costs considered, what's the remainder of the activity looking like in terms of where the project's currently at? We also have a pretty cool split of historical versus forecast charting and so on. So under one roof, you have a single file that will literally take you from initial starting strawman FISO through project development, through to completion and project closeout. And if you have to report on how a project went, the same file that you started with 18 months ago will also have your entire project return that literally shows you this is what happened. So from a historical to forecast perspective, again, as with broader Medano content, we've got that stuff, you know, absolutely nailed. Now, the other kind of whiz bang stuff that I'll probably show you all relates more to the ability to kind of grow this model a bit more comprehensively. So these models are modular, still obviously all just Excel, but say I've got a multi-stage development. All I have to actually do is literally go up to the Medano tab. And if I click on the mirror button, what that will allow me to do is select my current development stage and insert multiple of these. Now let's just insert another three. Medano will hop in, build out those three additional modules, and they'll have the same structure as this current initial development stage. But obviously we can have differential scale in terms of number of categories. It won't just build those out. If we hop across to our financials, what we'll also see is that those financials have been comprehensively updated to reflect all of these different stages. So it's a truly modular system, you know, the only one available in the world. Um, and once you start to build models on a modular basis, particularly in a, in a plug and play universe, your ability to model even the most complex property development scenario still becomes a very quick process of just inserting modules, changing categories. It'll take you five seconds to build your model. And as it should be, it will then take you another, you know, 20 hours to populate it with, with your best estimate of the assumptions. The key point is that you aren't spending time kind of wrestling with Excel because everything is managed. It's all incredibly efficient and incredibly robust. That doesn't just apply to the current content that's in there. So obviously, if you've got a multi-stage development, there's probably going to be some sort of common costs. And this is where the insert from web functionality really kind of comes into its own. So if I just click insert from web, if we wanted common cost, there's a common cost module. So all we have to do is select that, select the type of common cost module we want, and it will drop in. If you want, a, you know, a consolidated view of the world. So at the moment, we've got our current developments, and each of those has its own summary dashboard. Now, obviously, it's a consolidated view of the world. We probably also want that consolidated dashboard. So, you know, inserting that will suck in all the information and give us that console view. So there's all the different types of modules that allow you to do a lot more than just, you know, your traditional feasibility. I'll mention no names. It largely is a hide show process. So Medano isn't some kind of brittle hide show mechanism. It's truly plug and play. And once you start to work at that modular level, you can just get a lot more done. So, for example, bar charts. The model doesn't contain a whole bunch of hidden bar charts. 
it contains bar charts that allow you to to explain a certain narrative for the particular deal you're working on. So again, if um, if it's a portfolio effect, then you can move into those top asset style bar chart. You know, it's very much kind of choose your own adventure. So that's just a little bit around the modularity. You'll also notice in in their different debt modules. So that the funding that you can create when you start to get plug and play debt, there's no feasibility structure that I'm yet to come across that we can't model using a modular system that includes prefs, mes, you know, different equity holders with a modular system, particularly given the modules we've, we've already got, we can really streamline that funding and capital structure piece. One other thing I'll just show you is related to that. So if we just hop across to the financials, if we want to add in more debt, it is as simple as right clicking, inserting category and more debt will automatically be created for us. That debt isn't just kind of modeled out, it's also scooped into the cash waterfall. And so if we want to change the rank or the sequence of the debt drawdown or the repayment across all of our capital structure, it's as simple as changing the rank assumptions. So if you've got a property feasibility that's got 25 tranches of debt, the software and structure and system can handle that all pretty quickly. It's going to, again, take you longer to populate it than it is for the software to build it. So it was a huge depth to the system. The purpose of this is really just to give you that big picture overview on how to actually use things. As with the property planning content, I definitely advise just opening up and having a play with it. So chuck in some modules, see how they interact, add a whole bunch of development stages, you know, insert different depth modules, just see how the whole system works because if you add too many categories, you can easily then just delete them. So it is truly kind of plug and play. If you're looking for any particular type of funding structure, then definitely worth sending us a note through the support system because we haven't just got the modules you can see through your, your interface. We've actually got a whole stack in our, our kind of back catalogue and usually they'll solve any kind of analysis problem that somebody's trying to work with. Uh, so thanks for listening um, and enjoy playing with the property feasibility content.